All right, one more section. Section 5.2 is the something on something called synthetic division, which sounds way more complicated than it is. Um, before we get into this section, we have to understand a relationship between division and factoring. And let me just make up a problem that's factored, unfactor it, and show you how maybe the division relates <laughs> will we'll show me um, how something might factor. So let me just do a, a warm-up before we get into the homework. Let me take x plus 2, multiply it by x minus 5, multiply it by x plus 6. So I'm going to FOIL this out, multiply the first two parentheses, I get first are x squared, outers are minus 5x, inners are positive 2x, last are minus 10. So this gives me x squared minus, <laughs> minus 3x minus 10 times x plus 6, and now I'm going to multiply this out. I'll go x squared times x and get x cubed, and then x squared times 6 and get plus 6x squared, and then minus 3x times x is minus 3x squared, minus 3x times 6 is minus 18x, and then minus 10 times x is minus 10x, and minus 10 times 6 is minus 60. So if I do this multiplication, I get x cubed. These two terms come out to be a plus 3x squared. These two terms come out to be a minus 28x, and I get the minus 60. So let me just transfer this bit of information onto my next sheet of paper. I don't need the multiplying out part. Well, maybe I'll bring it back. So I know that x cubed plus 3x squared minus 28x minus 60 equals x plus 5 times x minus 6. Whoa. Actually haven't been drinking, believe it or not, um, equals x plus 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 6. And for what it's worth, when I FOIL those out, that's x squared minus 3x minus 10 times x plus 6. This is kind of what I really want to look at, this comparison that x cubed plus 3x squared minus 28x minus 60 equals to x squared minus 3x minus 10 times x plus 6. How I say factoring is related to division, here's something that's unfactored. Here's a partially factored form of the, this cubic polynomial. If I divide both sides by x plus 6, I get this. I get x cubed plus 3x squared minus 28x minus 60 divided by x plus 6 equals to x squared minus 3x minus 10. Which means if I knew, if, if I could do this division, then I could factor this x cubed plus 3x squared minus 28x plus minus 60 because this division tells me that this factors as something times x plus 6. So if I remember how to do division, the, this division is going to come out to be that. And very specifically, the answer to this division, let's pretend I don't know that answer, so that when I do this division, if I get a remainder of 0, which is a big deal, 
If I do this division, I'll just say this equals some answer. That means that x cubed plus 3x squared minus 28x minus 60 equals x plus 6 times that answer. Because if I multiply both sides by x plus 6, I get this polynomial. So if my goal is to factor something as grungy as x cubed plus 3x squared minus 28x minus 60, if I can divide it by something that gives a remainder of 0, the result of that division leads to factoring. And let me show you a slick way to divide. So in uh, beginning algebra, you do long division, which is horribly, really cumbersome. In this algebra class, we're going to do synthetic division. So I'm going to do this division using something called synthetic division. I know what the answer is going to be. When I divide these two things, I need to get x squared minus 3x minus 10 with no remainder. So this should come out to be x squared minus 3x minus 10, because I know that x plus 6 times x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals to that because I found out by, I just multiplied these out and got I, this factors, well, this multiplies out to be that, and these are all equal to each other for what it's worth. So I'm going to show you how to do the division of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 28 minus 60 over x plus 6 using synthetic division. That division will tell me how to factor x cubed plus 3x squared minus 28x minus 60. I do synthetic division by in, I make, I make a, a, a bar in a backwards L. In the backwards, inside the backwards L, I put the zero or the intercept that relates to the, what I'm dividing by. x plus 6, if I set it equal to zero, I get negative 6. The 0 that relates to the positive 6 is negative 6. Usually I just say, if I'm dividing, I change the sign of what I'm dividing by. I put that number in a little backwards L. Don't use any letters for synthetic division. I'm going to pull off now the coefficients of what I'm dividing by. There's a 1 in front of the x cubed, a 3 in front of the x squared, a minus 28 in front of the x, a minus 6. I don't need anything else but that. So what I did is I took the numerator of my division problem, pulled off the coefficients, 1, 3, negative 28, negative 60, took what I'm dividing by, changed its sign. Synthetic division only works if you're dividing, dividing by x plus a number or x minus a number. It doesn't work if there's like an x squared in the denominator. So this is the, the, the segment or the, 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 the structure for doing this synthetic division. My goal is to get this for an answer. First thing I'm going to do is whatever number I write first, I'm just going to bring it down. So the first number I wrote was a 1. I'm just going to take that 1 and bring it down and put it under the division bar. The rest of what I'm going to do is multiply and then add. So now I'm going to take the negative 6 that's in the little backwards L. I'm going to multiply it by the number that's on the bottom of my little bar here. Negative 6 times positive 1 is negative 6. And I'm going to add these numbers together. I put the negative 6 in the next blank spot that was available. The blank spot that I hadn't used was under the 3. Now I'm going to add these. 3 plus negative 6 is negative 3. If I start to look at this, the number in front of the x squared in my answer was a 1. The number in front of the x was a negative 3. These are good things. I'm going to continue with my multiplying and add strategy. So now I'm going to multiply this. I'm going to multiply negative 6 times negative 3. When I multiply two negatives, I get a positive. I add negative 28 and 18 because those have opposite signs. I subtract and take the sign of the larger. I get a negative 10 when I do that, negative 10 there. And then one more step, one more multiply and add, 
I multiply this negative 6 and this negative 10 and get a positive 60. I add and get a 0. The very last number in synthetic division is my remainder. If the remainder is not 0, synthetic division doesn't help you factor. The term to the left of the remainder has no x. The term to the left of that has an x to the first power. The term to the left of that has an x to a second power. So now I'm going to insert x's, and I'm going to get 1x squared minus 3x minus 10 remainder of 0. So the result of this division of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 28x minus 60 divided by x plus 6 is x cubed minus 3x x squared minus 3x minus 10, remainder of 0. Synthetic division is a tool that allows me to do division. If the division comes out to remainder of 0, then I know how to factor. Because if I take what, I, what the numerator will equal to the denominator times the result of the synthetic division, provided the synthetic division has a remainder of 0. If not, then the factoring isn't so interesting. Um, that's, in some sense, the entirety of section 5.2. So I'm going to dig out the section, get into the section, and as I go more through some problems, you'll maybe start to see more of what I was trying to describe here. But to do this section cold, I didn't think it was fair. So I want to do a little warm up, but even if the warm-up isn't completely clear to you right now, by the time I get done with the lecture, I think this topic will be moderately easy for you. So first problem, even problem, says perform the synthetic division. To perform synthetic division, I make a, a, a bar, a backwards mark, or backwards L, and synthetic division works for dividing, as long as you're dividing polynomials and the denominator doesn't have any exponents. I can, it's x plus or an x minus a number. I'm going to take that plus 3 and set it equal to 0. If I set x plus 3 equal to 0, I'd subtract 3 and I get minus 3, which would kind of be a, an intercept or a 0 that relates to a factor. I'm going to pull off the coefficients of 5, 18, 7, and negative 6, and then bring down, and then multiply and add the whole way. I'm going to bring down this 5, and now I'm going to multiply negative 3 times positive 5, negative 3 times positive 5, positive times a negative is a negative, so I get negative 15. Then I add those numbers because they have opposite signs, it's really a subtraction. And then I'm going to multiply again. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. I add 7 and negative 9 because those have opposite signs. I subtract and take the sign of the larger. And then I multiply one last time. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So that tells me How these, what the answer to this division is. Very specifically, the far right number is the remainder. Here's a remainder of 0. The second to the end is the term without the x. Then I get an x term, an x squared term. If there was more, I'd have an x cubed and an x fourth and so forth. So this says that, that this, 5x cubed plus 18x squared plus 7x minus 6 divided by x plus 3 equals to 5x squared plus 3x minus 2, remainder of 0. That's the answer to part A. This is performing the, synthetic di performing the division using synthetic division. Part B says if the remainder is 0, which it is here, use the result to completely factor the numerator, essentially. So the synthetic division will tell me that this numerator, 5x cubed plus 18x squared plus 7x minus 6 equals the answer to the synthetic division, which is 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 
times what I'm dividing by. Because if I take this problem right here that I have and multiply both sides by x plus 3, if I multiply this side by x plus 3, I cancel the x plus 3s. If I multiply this side by x plus 3, I don't need the remainder to write the remainder because it's 0, I get a factored version of my original problem. I claim if I was patient and I multiplied this side out, I'd get that side. This is considered partially factored. So I was, synthetic division with a remainder of zero gives me the ability to partially factor a numerator or a polynomial in a numerator. To completely factor, I need to factor more and that's bottoms up factoring that I don't need synthetic division to do. I'm going to pretend that you know how to factor. 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. You should pause the video and factor it yourself. I'll factor it for myself. The 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 factors into 5x minus 2 times x plus 1. So now I took something that in general I would have no idea how to factor a cube getting a synthetic division result with a remainder of zero gives me a tool to factor cubes when I generally can't factor cubes. So each of the first 10 problems starts off and asks me to do a synthetic division. I'll do the synthetic division. If the remainder isn't zero, I'll just write the answer to part A with an R not zero and stop. If I get a remainder of zero, then the synthetic division shows me how to factor the numerator of the fraction, and I'll factor it. If I wanted to, I would check this, but this was going to take a long time to multiply out, so I'm not going to check this out. But if, if you're patient and you want to pause the video, you should be able to multiply this out or that out. Both of these things to the right of the equal sign, if you multiply them out, they should both equal the numerator of the original problem. And that's everything there was to do for problem two. Problem four, again, wants me to do synthetic division. So it gives me a nice problem. It's divided by x minus 2. I'm going to change the sign of that x minus 2 to positive 2. Pull off the coefficients of 9, minus 18, minus 16, and 32. I'm going to figure out what that division equals to. First, I'm going to bring down this 9. And then I multiply and add the rest of the way. I go 2 times 9 is 18. I write that 18 in the blank that's open. Negative 18 and 18 have opposite signs. They actually multiply, add up to be 0. Then I'm going to take 2 times 0 and get 0. Negative 16 plus 0 is negative 16. And then 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. Negative 32 plus 32 is 0. This is the remainder, this is the no x, this is the x to the first power, this is the x to the second power. The result of my second synthetic division is 9x squared plus 0x minus 16, remainder of 0. So the answer to part A, the answer using synthetic division, this equals to, this division is just going to be 9x squared minus 16. I don't need to show a 0x because that's equal to 0. I don't need to show a remainder of 0 because it's 0. So that's the answer to part A. Because the synthetic division gave me a 0 remainder, I know how to factor the numerator. The numerator 9x cubed minus 18x squared minus 16x plus 32, which in general I'd have no idea how to factor, is going to factor into the denominator x minus 2 times the answer to the synthetic division, 9x squared minus 16. That's considered partially factoring. Synthetic division helps me partially factor, but it's not completely factored because this 9x squared minus 16 is a difference of squares and it factors more. So to finish up part B, I need to look at the result of my synthetic division and see if that factors more. And if it does, I'm going to factor more. So this should multiply out to be x minus 2 times 3x plus 4 
times 3x minus 4. And if I multiply this or this out, both of them are going to multiply out. If I'm patient enough to 9x cubed minus 18x squared minus 16x plus 32. Because synthetic division with a remainder of 0 gives you a tool to factor a numerator in a division problem. And so this would be the answer to part 4a. This would be the answer that I want for 4b. It's completely factored. And I wouldn't have done 4b if the remainder wasn't 0. If the remainder is not 0, I just stop because the factoring doesn't, isn't productive. OK, so for 6, it's a sneaky problem because in 6, I don't have every power of x. And synthetic division not only requires every power of x, it needs the powers to be written in descending order. So I need to think of problem 6, part a, as having a 0x in the numerator for the x to the first power term. If I didn't insert that, then my synthetic division wouldn't work right. So now I take the sign of the x in the number in the denominator, change its sign, and get a 4. Pull off my coefficients of 5, negative 6, 0, and 8. Bring down the 5 and multiply and add a bunch of times. First multiplying, 4 times 5 is 20. Negative 6 plus 20 is positive 14. Next multiplication, 4 times 14 is 56. Add 0 and 56 is 56. And then 4 times 56, I think is 224. Add, I get 232. The remainder is 232. I'm not going to factor because I have a remainder. And the result of my synthetic division, I have to give the first term an x squared. It always has one, the exponent one less than what I'm dividing by. I start off with an x cubed. I'm going to end up with an x squared. So the result of the synthetic division, the answer to part a, this division gives me 5x squared plus 14x plus 56 and then remainder of 232. There's alternate ways to write that remainder, but I just, with the R is completely fine. So that's the answer to part 6a. Because the remainder is not zero, the factoring that I can kind of fudge together with synthetic division isn't productive. The remainder makes it funky, and I want to show you that, that oddness because it's not useful. For 8, the problem isn't written as a fraction. It's written with a division sign. Any problem that's written with a division sign can be rewritten in fraction form. So the problem that I wrote is equivalent to x cubed plus 512 over x plus 8. Both the original problem and my rewrite of the problem aren't suitable for synthetic division because they're missing pieces. I need to rewrite this as x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 512 over x plus 8. So not only did I like, um, am I more comfortable with it written as a division, I'm also in need of a couple zeros. So I'm going to do that synthetic division. Take the sign of the 8 and change it, and then pull off the coefficients of 1, 0, 0, 512 is a disturbingly large number. Do my synthetic division. I'm going to bring down the 1. Multiply negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. Add 0 and negative 8 and get negative 8. Multiply negative 8 and negative 8 and get 64. Add 0 and 64 and get 64. Multiply negative 8 and 64. I think that's negative 512. Just to make sure I'm not going crazy here, to go negative 8 times 64, you do get negative 512. You add and get 0. So the answer for my synthetic division, this division, which gives me the ability to factor x cubed plus 512, the answer to this is this equals to I'm going to take one degree less. So I started with an x cubed. I'm going to put a 1x squared and then minus and then lower my exponent 1 to 8x. And then since I'm out of exponents, the 64, the positive 64 is not going to have an x. 
remainder of zero. So the answer to part A, that's the re result of my synthetic division. The synthetic division tells me how to factor the numerator. Specifically, this says x cubed plus 512 equals to x squared minus 8x plus 64 times the x plus 8 that I divided by. I think this is prime. I don't think this factors more. In order to, to factor this more, I would have to factor x squared minus 8x plus 64. I know my signs are minus and minus. The last would have to multiply to 64 and add to negative, or add to 8. And 1 and 64 don't give me an 8. 2 and 32 don't give me an 8. 4 and 16, which multiplies to 64, don't give me an 8. 8 and 8. I don't think this factors. So I believe, since I can't factor that, this is considered completely factored. So sometimes when you get a result for your synthetic division with a remainder of zero, the two pieces, neither of them factor more, and that's the case here. This is a prime polynomial. So this would be considered completely factored, x cubed plus 512. This I actually knew how to factor. I teach you, this is, this is a sum of cubes, and you learn how to factor that in intermediate algebra, maybe beginning algebra. I think there's one more of this style of problem, then we'll move on to another style, which really won't be different. Okay, so number 10 wants me to divide x cubed plus 5x squared over x plus 5 using synthetic division. I don't even need synthetic division to use to do that, but I'll use it. I'm going to rewrite this as x cubed plus 5x squared plus 0x plus 0 over x plus 5. I could have actually done this division by factoring because this numerator, there's a common factor of x squared. When I factor out an x squared from the numerator, I'm left with an x plus 5. The x plus 5's cancel. My whole answer should just be x squared. Let me, hopefully I get that. So now let me take the denominator, change its sign, pull off my 1, my 5, my 0, my 0, slightly worried, bringing down the 1, multiply negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, 5 plus negative 5, 0, negative 5 times 0, 0, 0 plus 0, 0, negative 5 times 0, 0, 0 plus 0, 0. My answer, the first letter, the first number gets an exponent 1 less than what I started with, so this is going to be a 1x squared, and then it's going to be plus 0x plus 0, remainder of 0. So this division is just equal to x squared, which I could have got by factoring and canceling, because the numerator factored that led to canceling could have got the x squared without using synthetic division. The answer to part A, this whole thing just equals to x squared, which means that the numerator, x cubed, or the dividend, x cubed plus 5x squared, equals to the result of my synthetic division times what I divided by, which is x plus 5 times x squared, which I knew I could factor that all day without using synthetic division. But it's a, it's a tool that will factor problems that you know how to factor, and it will factor problems that you can't factor, which is the, kind of the beauty in it. So this is considered completely factored. It looks odd writing it the way I wrote it. I probably should have written the x plus 5 second, but they're both correct, completely factored. Okay, so synthetic division, it's, it's important. The rest of the problems in this section are going to have synthetic division. They're going to be a little bit different. A little bit different is I give you a polynomial. I want you to factor that polynomial. And I want you to factor it by doing synthetic division. Very specifically, if I look at the problem in number 12, x cubed plus 8x squared plus 11x minus 20, I want to divide this by something so that I get a remainder of 0. And I need my calculator to tell me what to divide by, or some horrible theorem called the rational root theorem that would take about a half hour to explain. 
and make it so it takes about an hour to do every problem and I don't care to do that. So I'm cheating you here, but it's a kind of cheat. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do for problem 12 and each of the problems between 11 and 20 is the function that's given, I'm gonna graph it. And very specifically, I need to find an x-intercept. If I find an x-intercept, that x-intercept is gonna help me decide what to use for my synthetic division. It'll help me factor the original problem. So I entered the function. I'm gonna hit zoom in standard because I have no idea where my window is set. And any x-intercept will work. This turns out they have a bunch of x-intercepts. It has x-intercepts at one, an x-intercept at negative four, and an x-intercept at negative five. So my x-intercepts for what it's worth, I'm gonna write them cheating. I'm gonna say they're at x equal to one, x equal to negative four, and x equal to negative five. I can't have three x-intercepts in terms of synthetic division. I need to pick one of them. There isn't a right nor wrong one to pick. In my answer, you're going to see all of these x-intercepts. So first thing I did is I used my graphing calculator, and it's a third-degree polynomial. I need to find one zero. A zero is an x-intercept. I certainly don't mind the, the negative four so much. So I'm going to pick. I'll pretend I, the only one that I saw was x equal to negative four, even though I saw positive one and negative five. I'm going to pretend that's all I saw. And now, I need to know what to divide by. I divide by, well, I'm going to set this equal to zero by adding four to both sides. I claim that if I do this division, x cubed plus eight x squared plus 11 x minus 20 over x plus four using synthetic division, that I'll get a remainder of zero that remainder of zero will help me factor that x cubed plus 8x squared plus 11x minus 20. And I'll magically see some of these other numbers come up kind of with their signs changed. So let me um, do this synthetic division. That x plus 4, which I got from finding the x-intercept, setting the x-intercept equal to zero, I changed the sign of that backwards, L, and then pull off my coefficients of 1, 8, 11, and negative 20. Bring down my 1. Multiply negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add 8 plus negative 4 is positive 4. Multiply negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. Add 11 and negative 16 is negative 5. Multiply negative 4 times negative 5 is 20. Add and get 0. So this gives me 1x squared plus 4x minus 5, remainder of 0. And what the synthetic division tells me that I just did is how to factor x cubed plus 8x squared plus 11x minus 20. It says that that equals the denominator of what I divided by, x plus 4, times the result of my synthetic division, x squared plus 4x minus 5. That's considered partially factored. To completely factor, I need to factor that. When I factor that, the x plus 4 doesn't change. That's easy factoring for me. That factors into x plus 5 times x minus 1. This is considered the complete factoring of my original problem. I can absolutely easily check to make sure I'm correct. To make sure I'm correct, if I graph the original problem and my answer, if the graphs don't, if I, if I see more than one graph, then I've messed up. For instance, if I take this problem and graph now what I think my factored answer is, x plus four times x plus five times x minus one. When I hit my graph button, I'm only going to see one graph because my new polynomial is just equivalent, just written different. Let me show you what would happen if I messed up. If I blew a sign on this, if I thought the x plus 4 here should be x minus 4, and in my answer I said x minus 4 times x plus 5 times x minus 1, when I hit my graph button, there's the original function, here comes my new function. 
and look, it doesn't, it doesn't match up. I see this garbled mess. So you can tell when you graph the original function and what you think the factored answer is, if you're correct or not, if you're factored correctly because you only see one graph because you've actually written the same equation two different ways. That's everything that needed to be done for problem 12. I needed to use my calculator to find any place, any x-intercept. I needed to set that x-intercept equal to zero, divide the original problem by what you get when you take the x-intercept instead of the equal to zero using synthetic division. If you don't get a remainder of zero, then you'd either pick the wrong number or made a mistake using your synthetic division and then factor the original problem. 14 is going to be similar. It's going to have worse factoring, but it's not going to be horrible. So for 14, I'm going to graph this function. y equals, clear out this other stuff that's in there, y equals 2x up arrow 3 minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 12. Hit my graph button. I need any x-intercept that I can tell exactly. That x-intercept right there is a fraction. I can't really tell. That x-intercept is a 2 for what it's worth. It touches the x-axis there, so that the factor that comes from that's going to have an exponent that's even, but that doesn't matter. So I graphed it. It looks to me like the only x-intercept that I could quickly see is that x equal to 2, which means I'm going to set this equal to 0 and go x minus 2 equal to 0. I'm going to do the synthetic division to divide 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 12 over x minus 2. I get a remainder of 0, and that's going to tell me how to factor that numerator. Change the sign of that minus 2 to a plus 2. Pull off my coefficients of 2, negative 5, negative 4, and 12. Bring down the 2. Multiply 2 times 2 and get 4. Add negative 5 and positive 4 and get negative 1. Multiply 2 times negative 1 and get negative 2. Add negative 4 and negative 2 and get negative 6. Multiply 2 times negative 6 and get negative 12. Add and get 0. Write an answer, taking this and making the exponent one lower than what I started with. I started with an x cubed. I'm going to end up with an x squared. I'm going to get 2x squared minus 1x minus 6 remainder of 0. So the synthetic division tells me how to factor the numerator. The synthetic division tells me that the numerator, 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 12 equals to x minus 2 times 2x squared minus x minus 6. That's considered partially factored. I could use bottoms up to completely factor that. So I'm assuming you can factor that without me showing you. If you can't, then come visit me and I'll teach you how to factor again. So my original polynomial can be factored into x minus 2 times whatever 2x squared minus x minus 6 factors into. and that's going to be 2x plus 3 times x minus 2. It looks dumb to see two different x minus 2's. It would have been better had I writ x, writ, written x minus 2 squared times 2x plus 3. That's good because at 2, the graph is supposed to touch and not cross the x-axis, and that's what happened. Let me graph this function, x minus 2 squared times 2x plus 3, which I believe is the factored answer, the answer to part b is my original polynomial equals to x minus 2 squared times 2x plus 3. This numerator factors into that. And I'm going to graph to make sure. Specifically, I'm going to enter my original function, which is 2x up arrow, I had it entered, 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x plus 12, and then enter what I think an answer is, Either way is okay. I'm going to do 2x plus 3 times x minus 2 squared. 
And when I hit graph, I best only see one graph. If I see two graphs, I have a mistake somewhere. So when I hit graph, it graphs the initial function, and now it's going to graph my factored answer. If I start to see more than one graph, I made a mistake. If it just stops, then I'm okay. And again, I could show you that my answer would be wrong. If, if I did just a small thing right here, if I change that, that sign of the 2x plus 3 to a 2x minus 3, all of a sudden when I hit graph, I'd see two graphs as opposed to one graph. There's the initial one, and this is what happens if I change my graph. You see, you start seeing a second graph, so you can tell your factored answer isn't factored right if it graph doesn't coincide with the original graph. Finally, an x to the fourth. When I have an x to the fourth, I have to do something where I call double synthetic division. And it's not terribly hard. It's just doing synthetic division twice using your answer for the second th synthetic division. But if you have a fourth degree polynomial, I need two zeros as opposed to one zero. So I'm going to graph the function, clear the functions out that are here. I'm going to graph x up arrow 4 minus x up arrow cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 8. Hopefully, when I graph, I can tell two distinct x-intercepts. With a fourth degree polynomial, I have to have two x-intercepts. A third degree polynomial, I only need one x-intercept. So I catch a graph, good things happen. I see a bunch of x-intercepts. I see an x-intercept at, it looks like negative two and positive two, and it looks also like negative one. One way to make sure you're not being teased or fooled by a graph is just go to a table, and oh, the x-intercepts, are going to have y's of zeros. So once I went to my table, I see at 2 there's a 0. So at x equal to 2 is an x-intercept because at x equal to 2, y is 0. Similarly, at x equal negative 1, there's an x-intercept because the y is 0 and also at x equal negative 2. So when I hit my graph, there's an x-intercept at negative 2, negative 1, and positive 2. I only need two of them. I'm just going to use, well, I'm going to use the two negatives. There's no reason to use, there's no right and no wrong ones. So I'm going to use x equal to negative 1. I'm going to add 1 to both sides and get x plus 1 equal to 0. And then I'm going to use the x equal negative 2. Add 2 to both sides and get x plus 2 equal to 0. The synthetic division that I'm going to technically do is is more, well it's not more complex, but what I'm going to do, the effect of what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original problem and divide by x plus 1 and divide by x plus 2. I'm going to get a remainder of 0. The answer to the synthetic division is going to give me a factoring. I'm going to take the x plus 1 times the x plus 2, which are the two things I'm dividing by, times my answer to my second synthetic division, and that's going to give me how to factor this polynomial. So I'm going to start off with the division by x plus 1, putting a negative 1 in my little hook and pulling off the coefficients of 1, negative 1, negative 6, 4, and 8. And I'm going to do my synthetic division. I bring down my 1. I multiply negative 1 times positive 1 as negative 1. I add, these have the same sign, so I get a negative 2. I multiply negative 1 times negative 2 and get positive 2. I add negative 6 plus 2 as negative 4. I multiply negative 1 times negative 4 as positive 4. I add 4 plus 4 is 8. Multiply negative 1 times 8 as negative 8. Add and get 0. Did my first synthetic division, I'm going to do my second synthetic division with the x plus 2 or the negative 2. And I'm going to use, so I'm done with that first synthetic division, the results of my first synthetic division but not the remainder. I'm going to use the 1, the negative 2, the negative 4, and the 8. And bring down my 1. Multiply negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add negative 2 and negative 2 is negative 4. Multiply negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. Add negative 4 plus 8 is positive 4. 
multiply negative two times four is negative eight, add and get zero. Because I started with a fourth degree polynomial, each time I do synthetic division, I knock it down one degree. This is a third degree, this is gonna be a second degree. This is gonna be one x squared minus four x plus four, remainder of zero. So now I need to actually factor the original polynomial. The original polynomial is gonna equal to the two things I divided by, x plus one and x plus two, times the answer from the second synthetic division. And let me write that down. So this initial polynomial that I'm trying to factor, this x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 8 is going to equal to the two things that I divided by, x plus 1 and x plus 2, times the answer from the second synthetic division, x squared minus 4x plus 4. That factors more into x minus 2 times x minus 2. So I could take the initial polynomial, do my double synthetic division, and then factor the result there. And so the initial, the answer to this, the factoring of my initial polynomial is going to be x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 squared, which means if I graph the original function and I graph this function, that the graphs, I shouldn't be able to distinguish the graphs because they're equal. Easy enough to check, so I'll take that second, I shouldn't erase that again, x up arrow 4 minus x up arrow cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 8, and my answer of x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 squared. When I hit graph, it's going to graph both functions, and I should only see one graph. I shouldn't see two graphs because the functions, the equations are equal. If I change one number or one sign in the original problem or the factoring, then I'd get graphs that weren't perfectly on top of each other and my answer wouldn't be correct. So that's all there is to do for 16. 18 is another double synthetic division because it's a fourth degree polynomial. So I'm going to graph that function, 4x to the fourth function there. Find two x-intercepts, do double synthetic division. So I'm going to go y equals, clear the junk that's in there, go 4x up arrow 4 minus 15x up arrow 3 minus 8x squared plus 15x plus 4, hit my graph button. Hope to find x-intercepts. If I don't find x-intercepts, I can't do synthetic division. Looks to me like there's a few x-intercepts. I'm going to peek at my table because I'm having a hard time seeing here. There's definitely an x-intercept at negative 1 and an x-intercept at 4. I just need two of them. So my x-intercepts that I noticed quickly are at x equal negative 1 and x equal to 4, which means the, ta the graph should cross the x-axis at negative 1 and cross the x-axis at 4. If I can't tell for sure where the graph is crossing, when I hit second in table, I look for zeros in the y column. There's actually a third zero there at 1 that I could have noticed. But I found my x-intercepts. Now I'm going to take the x, the x equal negative 1, set it equal to 0, and get x plus 1 equal to 0. I'm going to set the x equal to 4 equal to 0 and get x minus 4 equal to 0. The result of my, my synthetic division is going to divide the original polynomial, 4x to the fourth, minus 15x cubed, minus 8x squared, plus 15x, plus 4. I'm going to divide by both x plus 1 and x minus 4, doing a double synthetic division. And the result of my synthetic division is going to say 4x to the fourth, minus 15x cubed, minus 8x squared, plus 15x plus 4, equals to x plus 1 times x minus 4, and then times something, and that extra something's going to need to be factored. Need to do synthetic division twice. First, I'm going to do it with negative 1, and I'll pull off the coefficients of 4, negative 15, negative 8, 15, and 4. You could have done it with 4 first. It doesn't matter. Bring down the 4, multiply. I get negative 4. Add, get negative 19 multiply, get positive 19, add and get 11, 
multiply, get negative 11, add and get 4, multiply, get negative 4, add and get 0. Now I'm going to do synthetic division again, but this time I'm going to use the x minus 4 division, or use the 4 in the backwards L, with 4, negative 19, 11, and 4. Don't pull off that remainder. Bring down the 4. I'm going to use a different color so this doesn't blend in so well. Multiply 4 times 4 and get 16. Negative 19 and 16 is negative 3. Multiply 4 times negative 3 and get negative 12. Add 11 and negative 12 is negative 1. Multiply 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Add and get 0. The 0 is the remainder. I started off with a fourth degree. I did synthetic division twice, so I end up with a second degree. So this is going to be 4x squared minus 3x minus 1. So now I know the original polynomial multiple factors into x plus 1 times x minus 4 times 4x squared minus 3x minus 1. And to completely factor, I need to factor that using bottoms up. So the answer to part B is going to have four different factors. The first factors are the x plus 1 and the x minus 4 that I found for free by cheating on my calculator. And that 4x squared minus 3x minus 1, you could use bottoms up to factor it if you can't factor it quickly. It's going to factor into 4x plus 3 times x minus 1. I claim that that x plus 1 times x minus 4 times 4x plus 3 times x minus 1 equals the original problem. I'm going to confirm that by graphing this, going y equals, now doing x plus 1 parentheses, x minus 4 parentheses, 4x plus 3 parentheses, x minus 1 parentheses. After I enter those and hit graph, I shouldn't see a new graph when I graph the sec. Oh, I do see a new graph. Means somewhere I have a mistake. Either A, hopefully where I entered these problems, or in my work, which would be worse. Did I factor that right? 4x minus 4. It's not factored. Oh, it's not factored right. Oh, so this isn't factored right. I tried to factor it in my head and be so impressive. That right there does not, isn't that how that factored? That should have factored into, really, ha ha, no, minus 4, so 4 and minus 1, yeah, so, it should have been this. It should have been 4x plus 1 times x minus 1. So I, for whatever reason, I tried to factor in my head. Apparently, I'm not good enough to do that right now. I factored this wrong, and it showed right up because when I went to graph, my graphs didn't coincide. So now I'm going to fix that. I'm going to change the 4x plus 3 that I had wrong to 4x plus 1. So now I have x plus 1, x minus 4, 4x plus 1, x minus 1. I hit my graph button, and I hope I only see one graph. If I start seeing two graphs, then I've made a mistake. But now I'm not seeing two graphs, so I fixed my mistake. So that's the beauty about these problems. It's so easy to check yourself to make sure your answer is right. So the answer to this is the original problem factors into that. And the part A, I just needed any x-intercepts to get started. And I'm completely getting the x-intercepts from my calculator. One more of these. 20, I'm going to graph the function x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus 7. Because it's fourth degree, I need two x-intercepts. So clear out the functions that are in there. Graph the function x, up arrow 4 plus 8x squared minus 7. Hit my graph button. Hopefully, I get two x-intercepts. It looks like negative 1 and 1, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to go second calc, look at my tables, and really. This one's not good. I need to change this problem. This needs to be a plus 7. Otherwise, it's not going to work well. I, I started looking, and I didn't see any zeros in my y column. I said, oh, I just messed up. So let me change this to x to the fourth plus 8x squared 
plus 7. Now hit my graph button. Really? I get something worse. Oh, that's horrible. I need, so I need to completely change this problem, unfortunately. Let me think quickly on my feet and change this into something that's going to work. It's not going to be that pleasant, but... So I'm completely changing this to this. x to the fourth minus 25x squared plus 144. So this problem, I couldn't find the x-intercepts. It well could have had them, but I couldn't find them. I think they were decimals. Tried to change it. I changed it and it didn't have x-intercepts, so that was horrible. Synthetic division is not going to take you anywhere if you can't find an x-intercept. So I, the original problem, I couldn't easily find the x-intercepts because I didn't see any zeros in my, in my y1 column, and I couldn't really tell the x-intercepts properly, so I completely changed this to make it work. So synthetic division, it's very specialized. You need the problems to be set up for you perfectly. And if they're set up perfectly, then it works well. If they're not set up perfectly, then it doesn't work so well. So now I'm graphing the function x to the fourth minus 25x squared plus 144, which is the new problem 20. I need two x-intercepts. This is going to have a bunch of x-intercepts. Should I ask four x-intercepts? If I hit second table, I see an x-intercept at negative 3 and positive 3. Also, there are x-intercepts at negative 4. So at negative 4 is an x-intercept. Negative 3 is an x-intercept. Also, positive 3 and positive 4 are x-intercepts. And I don't need all those x-intercepts. I just need two of them. So quickly, from looking at the table and looking for y's or looking at the graph, I get my x-intercepts. I'm going to pick different numbers, and I'm going to pick those, negative 3 and negative 4. I don't know why I pick negatives. So I'm going to do this division, x to the fourth minus 25x squared plus 144 over when I take the x minus equal to negative 4 and set it equal to 0, I get x plus 4. So that's going to be dividing by x plus 4. When I take the x equal to negative 3 and set it equal to 0, I get x plus 3 equal to 0. That's going to be dividing by x plus 3. I'm going to do synthetic division once with negative 4, a second time with negative 3. And that's going to tell me that my original problem, my x to the fourth minus 25x squared, plus 144 factors into x plus 4 times x plus 3 times whatever the synthetic division gives me. I need to throw some zeros in here. I'm really going x to the fourth plus 0x cubed minus 25x squared plus 0x plus 144 divided by x plus 4 times x plus 3. If I don't put those zeros in, synthetic division won't give me the right answer. I won't get a remainder of zero. So I'm going to go 1, 0, negative 25, 0, and 144. Do my first synthetic division. Bring the 1 down. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add and get negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Add and get negative 9. Multiply negative 4 times negative 9 is 36. Add and get 36. Negative 4 times 36 best be negative 144. Add and get 0. I'm going to cheat, cross out the 0, and use my synthetic division on just this bank of numbers here. Bring down this 1 instead of rewriting them. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add and get negative 7. Negative 3 times negative 7 is 21. Add and get 12. Negative 3 times 12 is negative 36. Add and get 0. Because it's a fourth degree to start, I did double synthetic division. This is a second degree. This is going to be 1x squared minus 7x plus 12. So the synthetic division by itself tells me that the x to the fourth minus 25x squared plus 144 equals 2, what I divided by with my synthetic division, x plus 4 and x plus 3, and then the answer, x squared minus 7x plus 12.
I'm asked to completely factor that parentheses factors into x minus 3 times x minus 4. So my answer to part b, the original problem completely factored, is going to be x plus 4 times x plus 3, and then times x minus 3 times x minus 4. I can't get any exponents there because there aren't identical factors. So let me graph this, y equals parentheses x plus 4, x plus 3, x minus 3, x minus 4. I mean, it takes so little time to check, I might as well do it. So now I hit my graph button. Hopefully I don't see two graphs. If I see another graph starting to show up, then I made a mistake. The last problems really don't give me anything new. The, mid, the first group of problems were just to get me ready for synthetic division. The second group of problems teach me how to factor using synthetic division. The third group of problems, I'm going to factor and then I'm going to solve. So for the last bank of problems, the instructions just say solve, so they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty generic. So my steps, I could have said first, use synthetic division to factor. So that's what I'm going to start off doing. I'm going to factor. I'm going to do all this. This is kind of side work. And so eventually, I'm going to take my original problem, which is 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 3 equal to 0. And I'm going to factor it into three factors set equal to 0. And then once I have it set equal to 0 and factored, I'm going to get my answers by taking each of the three factors and setting it equal to 0. So just like I would solve any problem with an exponent, my goal is to have the left side factored, the right side equal to 0. Unfortunately, I don't know how to factor that. So in order to factor that, I need to use synthetic division and know what I'm dividing. So I'm going to divide 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 3 times something and get a remainder of 0. And I need to use my calculator to help me decide what to divide by. Without my calculator, I am left with something that you really wouldn't want to have to do, but other teachers make their students do. And I don't even want to show it to you. It's just a, a horrible mess. So as I look at this, really, second table. And equivalently disturbing, I don't see. Let me change this problem because this problem, it's supposed to work, but it doesn't work. In terms, of doesn't work meaning when I saw the graph, I only saw one x intercept, which is fine, I only need one x intercept, but I need to know what that x intercept is, and I don't know what that x intercept is. Let me change this problem to have a couple of minuses so that um, if I change it to this, 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 3 equal to 0, it'll work fine in terms of I'll be able to find a 0. I might not be able to factor it as nicely as I might like to factor it, but that's okay. I'll be able to still get my answers, no problem. So I'm going to change the problem because the original problem, how it was written, uh, wasn't something I could do synthetic division because it wasn't set up nicely for synthetic division. Synthetic division, in order for it to work, I need to get a starting point. And in order to get a starting point, I need to be able to find an x-intercept. And I couldn't find the x-intercept so nicely. Well, I could have done something on my calculator, but it wouldn't it would give me a fraction x-intercept. I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to change this problem to have a couple of minuses. And I magically know that when I hit graph now, I'm going to get a nicer x-intercept. I actually get double nice x-intercepts. When I look at this, if I hit second and table, I see an x-intercept at negative 1 and an x-intercept at 1. Both good. Doesn't matter what I'm going to use. I'm going to pick the x-intercept at, at 1. I like such 1. So the x-intercept that I saw was x equal to 1. So I'm going to divide by setting this to 0 by x minus 1. And that's going to tell me that this factors into x minus 1 times something. And the times something I'm going to get from the synthetic division. 
So I'm going to put a 1, and then a 2, a 3, a negative 2, and a negative 3. Bring down my 2, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So my synthetic division gives me 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. I'm going to factor that and consider that my complete factoring. So now I know that this 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals x minus 1 times that. And if I factor this into 2x plus 3 times x plus 1, I'll save a step rather than showing the x minus 1 times 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. I can put the factored form of that. So now I have this problem set equal to 0 and factored. The synthetic division was the work that needed to be done to factor it. Now I'm going to get my answers. I'm going to take the x minus 1 factor and set it equal to 0. I'm going to take the 2x plus 3 factor and set it equal to 0. And the x plus 1 factor set it equal to 0. For the x minus 1 factor, I'll add 1 to both sides and get x equal to 1. For the 2x plus 3, I'll minus 3 and get 2x equal to minus 3. Divide by 2 and get x equal to minus 3 halves. And for the x plus 1 factor, I subtract 1 and get x equal to negative 1. The answers to problem 22, the solution to the problem 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x minus 3 equal to 0 are x equal to 1, negative 1, and negative 3 halves. That's the only thing I'd have to write in my answer. All this work is just to get to getting the numerical answers. It doesn't ask me to factor, but I know that factoring is a way to solve a problem that's set equal to 0 that has an exponent, and synthetic division was the tool to help me factor. 24, same deal. Hopefully it's not magically just a problem I just tweaked that to. Close to it, though. Um, that's fine. So I'm going to graph this. y equals clear 2x up arrow 3 minus 3x squared minus 3x minus 5. Hope that I can see an x-intercept. I just need one. Any x-intercept will do me. And... It looks to me like there's an x-intercept at 3. I'm going to check by going second in table. And looking at 3 and seeing next to 3, I see a 0. And I don't. Ugh. I took these problems from a book and just assumed that the author was going to make nice things happen. But he didn't. So I'm going to have to tweak this problem as well. Sorry about this. Um, really disturbing. So let me figure out how to tweak it real quickly. I have to steal the calculator. So good that time. Give me a second, I'll perfect this. Much better. Sorry about this uh, newness. So I changed this problem. To this, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 2 equal to 0. The initial problem that I had, I don't know that it could be done with any um, strategy that, that I know. Um, you'd think stealing a problem from another book, that it would just work out perfectly. But unfortunately, it didn't. So I tweaked this problem. Fortunately, I can tweak them on the fly. I graph this function. I find an x-intercept going second table. 
looking for an x-intercept, there's one at negative one, there's one at two, it doesn't matter which one I use, I use x equal to two. And the synthetic division's gonna tell me the result of dividing two x cubed minus three x squared minus three x plus two, dividing it by x minus two, and specifically, when I get my answer, it's gonna tell me how two x cubed minus three x squared minus three x plus two factors, and it's gonna factor into x minus two times something. Now, hopefully I get two parentheses there. Let me do the synthetic division. I'm gonna go two, negative three, negative three, two. Change that negative two sign to a positive two. Bring down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So the result of my synthetic division is gonna be two x squared plus one x minus one, remainder of zero. That goes next to the x minus two in my factoring. So the initial problem that's set equal to zero factors into that. So when I'm solving two x cubed minus three x squared minus three x plus two equal to zero, that's the same as solving x minus two times two x squared plus x minus one equal to zero because that these two are equal to each other. I'm gonna factor this hopefully properly in my head as two x minus one times x plus one. Now I have it completely factored. You might add use bottoms up for that. Once you have it completely factored, you split the factors up. I'm gonna go x minus two equal to zero, two x minus one equal to zero, and x plus one equal to zero. This x minus two, I'm gonna add two to both sides and get x equal to two. For the two x minus one, I'm gonna add one to both sides and get two x equal to one and then I'm gonna divide that by two and get x equal to one half. And for the x plus one, I'm gonna subtract one and get x equal to negative one. So my answers to the new problem, new and improved problem 24 are gonna be x equal to two, one half, and negative one. And I don't need to show the factoring in my answer. The factoring is a tool that let me get my answer, but it wasn't the answer itself. So I'm gonna to have to do lots of changing when I get back to my office. I'm gonna put this up there, just so I remember to change it. Similarly, that up there. Ooh, I'm almost afraid that this isn't gonna work as well, but I will hopefully, I actually stole one problem that actually worked. So I'm gonna start off by graphing 26, which is two x up arrow three minus 11 x squared plus 10 x plus eight graph please have an x-intercept that I can find. Looks like this one actually works. So I go second in table, I just need any x-intercept. I actually see one there at two. So I'm gonna use the x-intercept at x equal two. That allows me to divide two x cubed minus 11 x squared plus 10 x plus eight, divide it by x minus two which is gonna give me the ability to factor. So the original problem that wants me to solve 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 10x plus eight equal to zero, after I do the synthetic division, I'll be able to factor that 2x cubed when I normally couldn't factor it. And that'll help me get the answer. So I'm gonna take a two and now I'm gonna go two, negative 11, 10, and eight, bring down the two, multiply and get four, add and get negative seven, multiply and get negative 14, add and get negative four, multiply and get negative eight, add and get zero. The result of my synthetic division is two x squared minus seven x minus four, remainder of zero. So I can change my original problem to an unfactored form equal to zero to a partially factored form equal to zero now I'm gonna factor it more. Use bottoms up factoring if you need the bottoms up factoring. If you can factor quickly in your head accurately, that's beautiful. 
So this 2x squared minus 7x minus 4, which you might have needed to pause the video and did bottoms up factoring, factors into 2x plus 1 times x minus 4. Now I have it completely factored thanks to synthetic division. I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. And I'm going to get, for the x minus 2 factor, I'm going to get an answer of x equal to 2. For the 2x plus 1, I'm going to minus 1 from both sides and get 2x equal to minus 1. I'm going to divide by 2 and get x equal to negative 1 half. And for the x minus 4 factor, I'm going to add 4 and get x equal to 4. So the answers to this problem, the solutions to that equation are x equal 2, negative 1 half, and positive 4. Because I've been dealing with third degree polynomials, I've only been doing single synthetic division. If I get a fourth degree, I need a double synthetic division. That's the case in problem 28. I hope to be able to do a double synthetic division. I need to graph that function. I need to find two x-intercepts. So y equals clear x up arrow fourth minus 2x up arrow cubed plus 10x squared minus 18x plus 9. Graph it banking on two x-intercepts that are easy to find. And Ha-ha, oh, trick, trick, trick. Let me do second table, and I see an x-intercept at 1. So x equal to 1 is definitely an x-intercept. When I hit graph, I don't see any other x-intercepts, but I notice that the graph touches and doesn't cross. That means that more than likely, x minus 1 squared, th that this x equals 1 comes from, a, comes from a factor with an even multiplicity. Its exponent is probably 2. I'm going to do synthetic division with 1 twice. Normally, I can't do synthetic division with the same number twice unless that has even multiplicity. And because the graph touches but doesn't cross the x-axis at 1, there the x equal to 1, or the x minus 1 factor, has multiplicity of at least two. Could be four, but it's probably two. So I'm going to eventually solve the problem x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 10x squared minus 18x plus 9 equal to zero. I'm going to do double synthetic division. Twice I'm going to do synthetic division with dividing by x minus 1 using x equal to 1. That's going to help me factor this into x minus 1 times x minus 1, or x minus 1 squared times some other stuff. So I'm going to pull off the 1, the negative 2, the 10, the negative 18, and the 9. Do it with a 1 twice. Bring down my 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, and add. So that's the first time doing it with the 1. Now I'm going to do it with the 1 again. Go 1, negative 1, 9, and negative 9. Bring down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Because I started with a fourth degree polynomial and did synthetic division twice, this is a second degree polynomial, which is going to be x squared plus 0x plus 9, remainder of 0. I can't factor that. I need to just do this now. This original polynomial, that fourth degree polynomial by synthetic division can factor into x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x squared plus 9. I'm going to get my zeros by taking each factor and set it equal to 0. If I take either of the x minus 1s or both the x minus 1s and set them equal to 0, I'm going to get 1. For the x squared plus 9, if I set it equal to 0, I'm going to minus 9 from both sides and get x squared equal to minus 9 because it doesn't factor. And then I'll go square root plus or minus square root. The square root of x squared is x plus or minus the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3i. So the answers, the solutions to this equation in problem 28, there's going to be three answers because one of them has an even multiplicity. 
hardly looks like the word answer. Sorry about that. The answers are 1, 3i, and negative 3i, which you can write as plus or minus 3i. And you could write the 1 twice if you care to, because it has even multiplicity. All right, one more. Force theory again, double synthetic division needed again. I'm going to graph the function x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus 9 with the hopes that you could actually see it. And it crosses the x-axis. It looks to me like 1 and negative 1. Let me second and table to make sure. At negative 1, I see an x-intercept. At positive 1, I see an x-intercept. So my x-intercepts are x equal to 1 and x equal to negative 1. I'm going to do double synthetic division. I'm going to divide by x minus 1. I'm going to divide by x plus 1. The result of my synthetic division will take the initial problem, x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus 9 equal to 0, and change it to x minus 1 times x plus 1 times the result of my synthetic division equal to 0. In order to do synthetic division, I need to make this a 0x cubed plus an 8x squared plus a 0x minus 9. I'm going to do both numbers. It doesn't matter which order. I do the 1 then the negative 1. So I'm going to go 1 and then eventually negative 1. So 1 and the 1, 0, 8, 0, negative 9. Bring down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. That's my first synthetic division. My second synthetic division I'll do with a negative 1. Take the 1, 1, 9 and 9, bring down and get a 1, multiply and get a negative 1, add and get a 0, multiply and get a 0, add and get a 9, multiply and get a negative 9, add and get a 0. This is going to be x squared plus 0, x plus 9, remainder of 0. So next to the x minus 1 and x plus 1 that I got from my zeros and my synthetic division, I'm going to write an x squared plus 9. Now I'm going to set each of these factors equal to 0. I'm going to go x minus 1 equal to 0, x plus 1 equal to 0, x squared plus 9 equal to 0. For the x minus 1, I add 1 to both sides. I get x equal to 1. For the x plus 1, I subtract 1 and get x equal to negative 1. For the x squared plus 9, I minus 9 and get x squared equals to negative 9. And then I go square root plus or minus square root and get x equal plus or minus 3i. So the answers to problem 30 are 1, negative 1, and plus or minus 3i. Long section again, but hopefully not as bad as the last section. It's just a lot of the same problems over and over again. Synthetic division gives you a tool for factoring. If you can factor a polynomial, you can solve a polynomial equation equal to 0. And that's kind of all the section showed. The first group of problems was just to get you comfortable with synthetic division. The second group of problems was to emphasize that you can use your calculator to figure out how to factor a polynomial that you couldn't factor generally. And then the third group of problems was actually solving equations that, that needed factoring set equal to 0, getting a starter with your calculator, a finisher by factoring in synthetic division. All right, that's got to be enough.